Um, good okay, morning in Switzerland and good afternoon in Shanghai. Welcome to join our 22nd Café de Science event. And today uh, is a special collaboration with Yangtze River Delta International Cultural Industry Expo. And in this lecture, we'll be focusing on Creative Switzerland. And we have invited six startups who are participating in our expo. And first of all, let's welcome um, Dr. Felix Musner, the Science Council and CEO of Swiss Next China to give us a welcome speech. So ladies and gentlemen, hello everyone, Dacia Hao. Welcome to our uh, Café de Science on Creative Industry in Switzerland. My name is uh, Felix Mösterm, the CEO of Swiss Next China, the Science Consulate of Switzerland in China. Uh, Swiss Next is here to show the best of Switzerland, build bridges and connect the dots in education, research and art science. Switzerland, situated in the middle of Europe, is a landlocked country with no natural resources. This is why we have to continuously invest in brains, produce innovative solutions and explore new frontiers. As we do today with our Café de Science and the six startups that Sisi mentioned. Today, we will learn about creative industries in Switzerland. The Creative Hub Switzerland and the six startups will present their concepts and projects. The audience here in Shanghai will also have the chance to see the exhibits at the Swiss Pavilion. This Café de Science is organized by Swiss Next China in collaboration with the Creative Hub Switzerland, Pro Helvetia, Yangtze River Delta International Cultural Industries Expo, and Present Switzerland. Thank you very much. I also would like to thank Sisi, Chang Tong, and Jerry from my team for the excellent job during the past weeks. Sisi, I give the floor back to you. Thank you, Felix. Um, so now we will move on to uh, Mr. Jacob Blume. He is a managing director of Creative Hub Switzerland. He will give us a speech about uh, the Creative Hub in Switzerland, their missions, and also their um, also the uh, the special project we are presenting now at the Yangtze River Delta International Cultural Expo. Jacob, please. Thank you, Sissi. Thank you, Dr. Mesner, for those introductory words. My name is Jakob Blumer. I'm the Deputy Managing Director of the Creative Hub Switzerland. The Creative Hub Switzerland is a supporting platform for the creative industries in Switzerland and one of the main organizers, together with Swiss Next China, of this exhibition of Swiss creative work here in Shanghai. In the following, I would like to give you a little bit of context to this exhibition. But first of all, I want to thank you to the Yangtze River Delta International Cultural Industries Expo and to Swiss Next China for the invitation and for making this whole event possible. We are so pleased to be here and to be able to show a selection of Swiss creative companies here in Shanghai. When we think of Switzerland, creativity and design may not be the first things that come to mind. But creative work has a long tradition in Switzerland and a tradition that goes far beyond the Swiss army knife or the watch industry. Innovation and design excellence are trademarks of the Swiss creative economy. Our creative work has long since conquered the world from the Freitag bag in the Museum of Modern Art in New York to the artist dresses worn by likes of Michelle Obama or to international big stars like Herzog and Demeron or Studio Oi. And promoting excellence in the Swiss creative industry is also the aim of Creative Hub Switzerland. Creative Hub Switzerland supports startups with coaching, networking and mediation in the market. Since it was founded in 2013, Creative Hub has supported over 300 creative entrepreneurs in setting up their business, developing their products and entering the market. It has built a unique network of international and national coaches and works with different organizations like funding programs, startup competitions or trade fairs. 
One of the core tasks of the Creative Hub Switzerland is to offer the Swiss creative industries a platform at home in Switzerland, but also abroad. So we're always looking for new partners all over the world. Creative Hub Switzerland sees itself as a partner, as a contact person, and as a foster and networker for the Swiss creative industries. That is why we were so pleased when we received the invitation from the Yangtze River Delta International Cultural Industry Expo last year. We visited the expo last year, and it soon became clear to us that we want to make this cooperation happen this year. Because the Chinese market in particular is of great interest to Switzerland. It offers little Switzerland access to an international market that has global impact and is innovative. So a convergence of those markets can, in our, uh, as we see it, only be a win-win for both parties. However, the co coronavirus almost thwarted all our plans. Originally, we have planned an on-site exhibition of a wide selection of Swiss startups and companies. But travel restrictions forced us to move everything in a digital space. But we are all, are all the more pleased now to show you some highlights of the Swiss creative industry today. All six creative companies that are being shown here represent an excerpt of the broad creative landscape in Switzerland from product design to textile design to game design. They all share a combination of technical excellence and innovation. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to these six companies now. If you would like to have further information on the Swiss creative economy, please contact me at any time. We are always happy to meet new people to create new opportunities. Finally, I would also like to thank all our partners who made this exhibition possible, namely Swiss Next China, Present Switzerland, and Pro Helvetia. Without their tireless efforts and their support, uh, this venture would not have been possible. So thank you all so much. But now to the main actors of today's event, the six Swiss entrepreneurs. And first, please welcome Hannes from Bananatix. Well, hello. I hope you can see me. Good afternoon, Shanghai. Thank you for inviting us. It's an honor for us to be part of this uh, forum. My name is Hannes Schönecker, and I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Question, which is a Swiss Zurich-based bag brand. And I'm uh, showing you a few things about our innovation uh, called banana techs. Um, we founded our company in 2008 and uh, it was our goal to create versatile everyday bags uh, made with natural fibers. So basically it's our target to make bags from plants. We were starting out with uh, cotton and organic cotton developments, and uh, we moved on to different other fibers as we tried to improve and uh, improve standards and find alternatives to existing materials. So five years ago, we uh, discovered the properties of uh, the banana fiber. And uh, what we did is we tried to make a technical fabric out of it. After three years of uh, research and development, we could launch this material and it is the first technical fabric which is made entirely from banana plants. So the composition is 100%. Due to the properties of the fiber, it's very durable, uh, resilient and with a natural wax coating, it's waterproof. Uh, it can be made in every color and it can uh, every finish be applied to it. The way it's cultivated is a huge upside. It's uh, growing in a permaculture environment. The plant is called Musa textilis. It has been cultivated for centuries, um, but so far it was only used to produce, for example, ropes for the shipping industry. Uh, 
or other sturdy things. Through a special process, we could um, refine it into a fine yarn that allowed us to make a technical fabric. It is 100% plastic free. Uh, it doesn't need any pesticides, fertilizer, not even water to grow. And therefore it's a biodegradable and circular solution. How is it uh, manufactured? Basically the fiber comes from the Philippines where there is a traditional history for uh, this banana fiber. There are also forest stations in Costa Rica, Ecuador, Indonesia. It has been used for the paper industry. Most of the tea bags worldwide consist of this uh, banana fiber because it's still um, tear resistant even when it gets wet. Uh, we have a partner and um, he processes the fiber into paper. The paper is then slit and twisted into yarn. And then we have another partner who is uh, taking care of dyeing the yarn, weaving the fabric and finishing it. So in a nutshell, to show the circle, you can see we harvest side stems of the plant, not the plant itself. We do a paper making process that leads into yarn spinning, weaving, coating with natural wax and beeswax. We create our bags from that material and you could just bring it back into the ground as a fertilizer for the plant itself. We've also made this uh, circle visible at uh, various occasions at the Milan Design Week and uh, Vienna Design Week, for example. So you could uh, actually see how the plant develops into the yarn and that is spun into uh, our fabric, which uh, we use to make our products and which could go back into this circle. So for ourselves, uh, as a back brand, we started uh, with this material in 2018 with uh, four products, two SKUs, uh, two colorways. It was a very successful launch um, within a few months. We've expanded ever since the range from those four products to 30 products. Uh, and we eventually will change to banana techs entirely. But we have also decided to open this up um, as a material and give everyone access to it. So the first product in the market will be is already uh, a, furniture, a piece of furniture, this uh, chair from Palaios. And we are now working on uh, several prototypes with many big brands. And we will soon see uh, sneakers, uh, watch bands, furniture, maybe even automotive applications and other things made from banana tax. Happily and fortunately, we have been awarded with a few prizes, uh, including the Design Prize Switzerland, but also being on the 100 Best Inventions 2019 mentioning in the Times Magazine, and a few more. And this is basically our story in a nutshell, and we're happy to share uh, more information with you if you like, or answer your questions if there are some. Thank you. Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, Laura, thank you. So thank you, Hannes. So uh, we will do the Q&A session at uh, the end of the presentation. So actually we will have two groups of startups. So each group will have three startups. And after each group of the presentation, we will have a Q&A session. So for our on online audience, you can use the Q&A tab to type in your questions. And for our on-site audience, uh, we have our uh, coordinators there. You can just pass on the microphone. So now let's welcome Laura. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, I'm Laura Gremion. 
uh, and I will look for my presentation here. Um, okay. So hello, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Laure Gramion, and uh, today I'm going to talk about my work as an industrial designer and my experiences in China. So, uh, as I said, I'm an industrial designer and I come from Neuchâtel. Uh, Neuchâtel is a small city in Switzerland, uh, which is originally uh, the uh, place of watch brands uh, like Breitling, uh, Tagaya, Zenit, uh, Parmigiani, every brand. Um, so, um, uh, I studied at ECAL uh, Design University uh, in Switzerland. And uh, after, after that, I started working for a company um, in uh, the German part of Switzerland. Uh, so I worked a lot for the watch uh, industry. So in the field of uh, window display and uh, also, uh, yeah, watch cases and every accessory around the watch. So this is, for example, a display I designed for Jacques Hedro, uh, with the little birds and metal, so for the winter. Um, and uh, so, um, uh, sorry, I worked Lord, a lot uh, also can you please, with, uh, sorry, the Chinese uh, industry. Our we had a Chinese team uh, um, also in uh, Shenzhen and Hong Kong, and so I collaborated a lot uh, with them, and I even visited uh, the Chinese factories which was a uh, really, uh, really nice experience and I learned a lot uh, from it. So I already uh, fell in love uh, with China at this point. And uh, yeah, so here Sorry, uh, are Sorry some to interrupt. of the brands Hello? Uh, I've worked with or I'm working with right Hello, now. Hello, Laura? And, yeah. Um, we can't see your presentation. Could you please uh, share oh. it again from your end? Oh no, okay. Uh, you can see. Oh, shit. Uh, you can use the share screen function. Yeah, I shared it. No. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sorry. I... Now, now it's good. Yes. Okay. Please continue. I wait. Uh, me... Okay. So I'm gonna show quickly the the first. Uh, so here it's me, and uh, so that was the city of Neuchâtel. Uh, here, uh, that's a project uh, I've made for Jacques Hedro. And uh, here, um, so that was where I was, uh, all the brands I work with. Um, and um, so, yeah, and on the right, uh, it's also a project uh, I've worked for. It's a lamp called uh, Celeste. Uh, and uh, it was also exhibited at the um, Rosetna Orlandi uh, Gallery uh, in Milano and also in Sardinia. And uh, here uh, are some of uh, my exhibitions. Um, I've made uh, also in, so international uh, and national uh, exhibitions. And here a uh, little bit of uh, a newspaper. And, and uh, here, um, a nice step of, uh, of my career uh, was going uh, at the Swatch Art Peace Hotel in Shanghai. So that was the first uh, time I visited Shanghai. And um, so that is, was a residency uh, I made uh, and I developed um, a few projects there, which I, was I will talk about uh, later. And um, so it was the first uh, time I visited this uh, really uh, great city where everything seems possible for me. And uh, I wish I could be there today. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we are doing it online and I hope uh, next time we'll be uh, able to be there. And uh, so uh, in early 2017, uh, I found in my own studios, I, I started working um, independently uh, just after Shanghai, and this is a photo of my workspace, where which I share uh, with other creative designers. Uh, here is uh, some of my work. Um, so, um, as you can see, I work mostly on 
uh, small um, objects which are for home use or uh, garden use. And uh, I worked with a lot of uh, various materials, a concrete, metal, uh, porcelain, um, yeah, wood, all kinds. And um, and I really, uh, what I really like is uh, learning from new materials and uh, new uh, ways of um, uh, producing things. So here today, I'm going to talk uh, specifically about two projects which have a special bond to China. So uh, this first project uh, is called Arimage. So it's a bag uh, made out of Tyvek. And Tyvek is a very special uh, material uh, which has unexpected properties. So it is uh, actually uh, very uh, light. So it looks like paper but it is also very light, uh, compact, uh, it is waterproof and almost unbreakable. So um, this project uh, was developed during the uh, Swatchart Peace Hotel Residency in Shanghai. And uh, so I, I was uh, working also online, so a bit like, like now with two other uh, designer friends uh, in Switzerland uh, to develop it. And uh, so this is a new version with uh, a colorful uh, material, which is uh, directly printed on the Tyvek. So uh, this project, um, we uh, started to found a brand uh, with it, but now we are, um, uh, that could be some uh, idea of a project I could uh, collaborate on uh, with you if you're interested. Uh, this is a second uh, project, so this has also a special bond to China because uh, we uh, made it together with a Chinese uh, designer, uh, which is called uh, Shen Ya Wang. And so this started um, during a workshop at Ekal, uh, we, which we were collaborating with the Tsinghua University in Beijing. So uh, we worked together on the prototypes on a one week uh, workshop on this project. And then uh, we, uh, so we started developing it and uh, made this uh, object, which is a bit between art and design. So the functionality of the object, uh, it is a rain collector and it makes music with the rain. So um, it's called Ting because it makes like Ting, Ting, Ting as every uh, raindrop falls on the top. And the top is a symbol, uh, it's kind of like a symbol manufacturing technique. It is uh, also, it makes this organic shape by hammering it and uh, heating the surface. So you can use the water of uh, inside, which is collected to water your indoor plants. So with this project, um, I think uh, I really like this project. It is a very um, artistic and poetic uh, project, but uh, it is still very, um, uh, expensive to make. So I uh, wish to ha have a more uh, simple version, which is easier to, to produce. And, um, and so I'm currently designing a second version, which I would be happy to develop further with, with uh, a Chinese uh, company. So um, as you can see here, I had two examples of uh, works uh, we could collaborate on, but actually I'm open to any uh, other proposal. Um, I work on, as you can see, many different uh, projects, many different materials. And, um, and so um, I would be open to uh, any uh, idea. And so what uh, would you benefit from partnership with me? So I have uh, eight years experience in the design industry. So I'm, quite young, but I still uh, have road material knowledge and manufacturing knowledge because I have worked uh, with different uh, factories and also independently, so with uh, different clients. And uh, so my style is a bit uh, versatile uh, because I can work uh, on different materials and uh, I can adapt very uh, easily. And of course, uh, I'm Swiss, so I'm uh, kind of precise and uh, I really like that things are perfectly made. 
So uh, thank you for listening and thank you for the invitation. So if you want to reach out with me, uh, don't hesitate. That's my contact and I also have with chat. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. So we'll move on to the next speaker is uh, Florin Chanel. He is the founder and CEO of Strix. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, it's good. Okay, perfect. Let me share the screen. Do you see the presentation? Yes, good. Okay, thanks. Um, it's great to be here. I'm Florin from Strix, and Strix is a mobile esports platform. So, if you are a, a gamer or if you work in the gaming industry, um, you probably know what esports is. It's a form of sport competition using video games. And my vision is to make esports accessible to anyone on the planet. But first, some words about myself. I grew up in a small village in Switzerland, in the, in the mountains, in the Swiss Alps, when I started programming my own games 20 years ago. I then moved to the city of Zurich to follow my passion and study game design at the Zurich University of the Arts, which is the number one design school in Switzerland. Right after my master's degree, I jumped into building my first gaming company. It's called Struct, where I'm still serving in the board. The company is successful, and today I can proudly say that I am the co-owner of the world's leading mobile game creation platform. This also got me recognized by Forbes as a 30 under 30 talent in the category of technology, just before I started building my next company which is now streaks. So what is streaks? The problem in the esports industry is that esports is still dominated by these super complex hardcore games because they have their roots on PC and console gaming. So the typical image of a gamer is still the one of the grown up man living in the basement of his parents, playing video games during night in front of his $5,000 gaming PC with his headphones on and sleeping during daytime. These communities are hard to understand for outsiders, be it their parents, but also marketing agencies, brands, sponsors. They are looking at the gamers and see that they are super excited and passionate about what they do. And they, yeah, they have a hard time finding ways to promote their products in front of the gaming audience because they neither have the right vehicles to do that, nor do they speak the gamer language. It's a super separate community. So Streaks opens that up and democratizes esports, makes it accessible, and all you need to join exciting gaming competitions is your smartphone. We are a 100% mobile esports platform. Gaming is the biggest entertainment industry. It is larger than music and film combined. Out of, within gaming, uh, you have the segment of mobile gaming, which is um, also the biggest segment in gaming. That wasn't always the case. Like 10 years ago, we barely had smartphones, but thanks to the insane growth of mobile penetration and so-called mobile first generations growing up now, Mobile is now bigger than console and PC combined. Within mobile, mobile esports is on a growing path. That also wasn't always the case. We see now mobile esports games popping up in the top esports games. And this is a strong indicator that also the future of esports is mobile. By the way, China is the biggest gaming country. So I'm super happy to be here today. On streaks, you can play games for free, win prizes, cash prizes, sponsor prizes, and um, everything is skill-based, so it's esports, and you can also organize tournaments. 
For brands, this is a new vehicle to promote brands to gaming audiences because advertisement needs new solutions. Uh, the young generation, like millennials, Generation Z, they are just immune to advertisement. They don't watch TV anymore. They don't listen. Uh, they don't read newspaper anymore. Um, they, they use ad blockers if they are online. The only way to reach them is yeah, basically on social media and gaming. And what you have to do to reach these people is to focus on experiences. If they just smell advertisements, they turn off. But if they have a great time in a video game and if, if they have an experience, they automatically love the brand behind these experiences. And it's not the other way around anymore. And all of the, the digital experiences possible, um, gaming is the supreme discipline. That's why we build branded mobile games. We have international clients. One of them is no one less than the Swiss government. And of all possible brands you could integrate in a video game, the government is, is the one, um, yeah, the, the most non-endemic one, meaning the, the one I have least expected. So the Federal Council of Switzerland promoted towards um, the Swiss population that, yeah, that you should play a video game um, instead of um, yeah, going outside. Uh, this was a campaign over the Easter weekend related to the coronavirus. So the Federal Council promoted that you should not go on a hike over the Easter weekend, although it's nice weather, but you should stay at home, play a video game, um, win the competition. You have this bunny, this Easter bunny, and you have to cross the street as quick as possible and not get caught by the virus, but reach your home safely. Um, so that was the marketing message. And together with the client, we, yeah, we heavily promoted the game. It landed in the top on the, on the number one position in the Swiss App Store charts in the category of casual games. And the Federal Council promoted it on its personal Instagram story. Within four days, we reached oh, a half of a million tournament runs in the game. One third of a year engagement time. That's four months of playtime crammed within four days. And you see that from all the downloads, we achieved um, a user registration score of 70%, uh, meaning that 70% of all the people who downloaded the game registered with their, for, yeah, for a Streaks account with their personal email address. So you can, you can smell um, a nice marketing tool here if you want to collect email addresses too. So that's it. If you want to promote your brand to gaming mass audiences too, I'm happy to hear from you. Um, or otherwise, if we want to build the next mobile esports super hit without any brand involvement, I'm also happy to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you, Florian. So now we will go to the Q&A session for 15 minutes. And we will, uh, for the three speakers, please turn on your video. And we will feature your video on the screen and also feature our on-site audience. Um, sorry, Stila, I think you, you need to uh, unmute yourself. We can't hear you at the moment. Hello, Cici? Yes, Can you hear me right now? Yes, yes, great. Okay, okay. So this is Stila, the on-site coordinator of 2020 YRDICIE. We know we have a lot of Chinese visitors. We are very interested in those Swiss startups projects and products. So we do have some like uh, audience, they have some questions. So any volunteers? Okay, how about this like gentleman in this white shirt? Do you have anything to say, you know, if you want to ask something for those Swiss startups? 
呃，我想问一下，就是因为他们的产，因为他们的产品是那个可以，呃，生物降解的，就是不知道他们这样的包在家里面放了几年以后，会不会就是显得比较旧？Uh, okay, you know, Mr. Lu has a question, which is that, you know, maybe Lori, uh, we know that you produce some backpack, and we have some question is that we know your backpack is very biodegradable. So we are wondering, you know, if I put this bike in my home for like 20 years or maybe 15 years, how would this be? Will my backpack gone or something like that? Could you help us to like solve these problems? I think this question was for Banana Tech. Huh? I, I think the question was for Banana Tech. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. so thank you for the question. Uh, in fact, you're not the first person asking this. Uh, the story is this. When you bury banana tax in uh, ordinary soil, it will disappear within a few months. But with the absence of microbes and fungi and everything that is part of uh, soil, uh, it will not. So you don't have to be afraid. You can uh, use the backpack for many, many years and it will not uh, disintegrate on your back while you cycle to your work. That's not going to happen. Thank you, Hannes, for giving us such a very good like answer. And we also have like another like a volunteer who has something to say. OK. I want to ask Laura. Laura? Yes. You know, this girl has a question for Laura. Okay, Laura, you know, you have a potential pattern right now. And this girl, maybe she is doing like something related to the designing. And she is a designer. So she knows that you have been working with and cooperated with a lot of designers. She is wondering, maybe will she have a chance to cooperate with you? 然后我想问一下，就是Laura的那些呃设计的作品，呃，或者是公司的产品，现在在中国有哪些推广的渠道和销售渠道？And Laura, you know, this girl also has another question. Uh, she knows that you may have like designed a lot of like products. Do you have any like promotional channel in China? Okay, now Laura, you have two questions. It's your time now. Yeah. Okay, first question. Yes, I'm always interested in uh, new collaboration. So, uh, of course, you can uh, send me an email and we can uh, we can talk. Uh, that would be very interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, for the second one, for the channels uh, in China, uh, for the moment, I don't have a, a very uh, brand uh, distribution network. So I've not really worked uh, on that. I've more uh, worked on the materials and uh, uh, also the ha yeah the developed projects uh, in in the the city of Shanghai. But uh, um, also that's what I'm looking uh, for here is uh, some partners for distribution and uh, and um, yeah this uh, building this network. Okay, Laurie, I have a very good, you know, I have a very good answer to have you like good news. Like Aries, the designer who just like put up that question, she now knew she he's longing to get your QR code, you know, to you know add you as your friends and to talk with you. Maybe later you can have like a newcomers. Okay, so um, let's move to the next one. Coordination. Um, so I think we will take some questions from our online audience. So the first one is from Jean-Philippe. Uh, I think this is question for Laura. Uh, have you been influenced by the Chinese culture? Yes, please, Laura. Sorry, my microphone. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jean-Philippe, for this question. Um, actually, uh, I've been very influenced by Chinese culture because it was it is really uh, different from Switzerland and it was uh, really an, uh, a 
big immersion for me to be there uh, for five months. So um, I really was fascinated by all the, the markets and uh, traditional materials um, and also calligraphy. That was an inspiration also for our bags uh, at first. So the first edition was inspired uh, by uh, Chinese uh, papers, which are uh, with this uh, a small um, golden, um, um, it was a Juan paper. And uh, so that was an inspiration. And the next uh, step uh, for me was uh, already this year to go uh, to the um, wrong design library, uh, also uh, in Hangzhou, and to study uh, more uh, materials, uh, traditional Chinese materials. So uh, I wasn't able to do it this year, but I hope to do it next year. And uh, so dig in uh, more into this uh, traditional uh, Chinese materials. Thank you, Laura. We have another question here is for Banana Tex. Uh, it's from He Miao. Have your products already in China? And for the bags, who are your target audience? What is the price range? Sure, thank you for that question. So I'll, I'll start, at, start at the end. Our target audience is uh, everyone who is interested in um, functional and sustainable bag solutions. Uh, the price range is between 200 and 300 uh, euros, roughly. And you can buy our bags in China. Yes, we do have a partner. And um, you can uh, find uh, it in our store finder. I have just posted the website. It's question.com. So you can see there um, the outlets in China. And you can also always order online. And we deliver to China within a few days. All right, so uh, if we don't have any question at the moment from on-site audience, I think we should move on to the second group. CC, we still have one audience. All right, she okay, so to say something to, we like, take, okay, okay. All right, we take one last question for this round. And uh, you don't need to uh, translation yeah. since we have the interpreters online, so it should be fine. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to ask, um, the man from Strix. Uh, okay. Um, I am from X1 Games from in, in Shanghai, and our company is looking for good game titles, especially indie games from overseas game development companies, to publish them in Chinese mainland or co-develop co-develop with them based on those IPs. So um, what kind of help or business that Strix can offer us? Uh, as far as I know, um, Strix is a um, uh, eSport platform, right? eSport, eSport. No, can no, no, you, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, can you maybe repeat the question? Are you a publisher and you're looking to okay, publish my, my, games my in question, China? My question is... Uh, and definitely talk about. Um, we are um, looking for some indie games from um, overseas game development and publishing Sorry, so let, let, let me repeat. My company is a game development and publish, publishing company from China, and we are looking for some good uh, game IPs and Pro and overseas game products, especially indie games, that yeah. we can publish them in Chinese mainland or co-develop with those companies based mm -hmm. on those IPs. 
Yep. Yeah, so what kind of help or business that Strix can offer us? Um, what we do, can you please mute the microphone? Sorry, I beg your pardon. I, I, can, I can't hear you clearly. Uh, please mute your microphone and uh, Florian will answer your question. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's see how it works. Um, with um, the mobile esports platform, that means that I build a certain infrastructure to turn um, a regular mobile game into an esports title. So for example, if you have a mobile game that can be anything like Candy Crush game or, or an action game, but you need some, some competitive elements like be leaderboards or a tournament structure or user login systems, in-game shops to, to purchase skins. All that infrastructure is, is what I'm building. And then I'm fairly open to integrate like existing mobile games, turn them into esports titles, and have them then like published as esports games. And esports is a great reason to like publish a game, market it, and monetize it. Um, but I'm also building like in my, my free time um, my own games, my own IP. Um, that takes a bit longer. Um, but I'm definitely open to like collaborate on on building, let's say, one amazing esports games or competitive game that can be marketed as an esports title, and then to publish it in China. I'm very interested to do that. Um, did you get my QR code in in the presentation? Um, I would be happy to yeah to to get in touch with you and. Maybe you can also send me your email address so we can start talking about it. We have all the uh, startup brochure on site for the audience. So, yeah. and we will also leave our uh, email afterwards. So since we are a little bit behind our schedule, uh, let's now move on to the second group. Thank you. So for the second group, our first presenter will be Romana. She is the founder and CEO of Yazoo. Romana, please. Good afternoon. Very nice to be here. One second. So. Can you see my screen? Could I have a little yes, please? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Romana and I'm one of the three founders of the company called Yazoo, which is an art tech uh, firm based in Switzerland. And uh, my core team, as you can see here, consists of uh, three people who are absolute experts within the art and technology and industry. Nico, for example, worked for the past 25 years uh, at uh, management and uh, executive director positions uh, in private and uh, public banks, but as well in IBM. Stefan uh, is our um, main lead developer and our CTO, and he has a master's degree in animation and post-production, one of the top-notch programmers here in the country. Um, myself, I am um, also a work ex at IBM. I work in leading uh, positions uh, in the IT and marketing um, in IBM, but also Red Bull. And I'm a member of the Association of Women in the Arts. This is an elite club um, for um, art leaders uh, uh, based in London. 
My company has won uh, many awards. So we have in 2018, for example, been nominated here in Switzerland as the best Swiss app of the month. Also, we have uh, won several company residencies in that year. One of them was, for example, being invited to uh, the city of Vienna in Austria, which is a very well-known art uh, and cultural hub here in Europe. So um, they wanted us basically to Sorry, Romana, we can't hear you now. Please unmute yourself. Yes, it's okay. Can you hear now. me? Yes, yes. Could, could you hear what I've said? Uh, just a few seconds, so should be fine. Okay, great. So uh, what I was saying that in 2018, we were uh, nominated as best Swiss app of the month here in Switzerland. Um, prior to launching our application in 2019. So we got um, basically their 2019 and 2020 uh, grants uh, of more than 100,000 Swiss francs. And um, we are uh, only a couple of weeks ago um, as a finalist presenting at the Luxury Innovation Award, which was here in Switzerland as well. And two weeks ago, we launched a brand new version of our uh, augmented reality art application for iOS and Android with a desktop version as well. Our clients are all over Europe and so are our partners and partially in Southeast Asia. One of our clients is Fondation Baila, which is a, a, a very renovated uh, museum here in Switzerland. Uh, well, the current situation of the market, art market is basically that there is a lot of paper still floating around. It's the only market which has not yet been fully digitized yet. And um, a lot of events currently are canceled, art fairs are postponed, uh, people do not travel anymore, but uh, we live in a digital age. Mm, the future is digital and that's where we can help them uh, to reach uh, their audience. Um, so basically we built uh, a tailor-made application for the art ecosystem. On the one hand, uh, we um, show the users of the application um, different types of art. They can discover it and uh, according to their taste, uh, we show them personalized content in their language. Also, uh, we make uh, the engagement and re-engagement of the audience uh, very easy because we send them uh, push notifications about news, artists and artworks, anything they are interested in. Um, you can share every content to social media and on top of that, uh, you can visualize every artwork in your own home thanks to the augmented reality we have developed. So our company developed the only omni-channel art experience. I will show you a short video which I recorded here from uh, one of our clients in Switzerland. This is like I mentioned before, Fondation Bayala, um, nobody less, a very renovated museum known worldwide. So um, this is the home screen from Fondation Bayala. And you can see, I can browse through the artworks. We have an algorithm which allows you to basically define your taste by swiping. You can see artwork details as well, like them. the measurements can be changed, for example, from inches to centimeter. The currency can be set uh, to your preference as well. And at the same time, you can chat with the exhibitor directly to have a conversation. Here is the view on wall option. You can move the artwork with your finger on the photo, but if you're not so convinced about your choice, you can change it to something else you liked uh, and see it there. Well, 
with our company, um, you can basically grow your audience in Switzerland and in Europe. You can get a partner which is specialized in the art tech, and we can be a bridge between China and Europe. So show your art at its finest and make your art available here through our augmented reality application to a very large network. The art lovers and collectors are basically just waiting to see some art from China. And this is our uh, technology. Like I mentioned before, we develop uh, augmented reality. So the augmented reality allows a very easy visualization of any artwork exhibited uh, in any space at any time. And um, selling products online, for example, with augmented reality increases the sales more than 30% due to the possible visualization and the product return rate decreases more than 20%. Our smart algorithm gets to know user's taste. So if you favorite things you like or you follow artists you love, uh, you will get to see more content according to your personal behavior within the app. And personalized content is key to find the perfect work of, work of art for your home. Um, from clients to, uh, from our clients' perspective, so we work from artists to curators, dealers to collectors, basically everyone who is involved within the art industry, exhibiting or collecting art. With our service, our clients benefit from uh, staying focused on their core business and our company takes care 100% of the digital part, uh, which is uh, the Azu app. So if you're looking for a partner and a very personalized service in art and technology based in Europe and Switzerland, we are here for you. Switzerland is home of 13 of the world's 200 biggest collectors. One of them is, for example, Uli Sik, and he is a Swiss uh, business entrepreneur, but also a former Swiss ambassador to China. Switzerland is known uh, to host some of the most prestigious art venues. Uh, like I mentioned before, one of them is our client, uh, the Museum of Biela Foundation, but as well, um, it's a host of the uh, art fair at Basel or even the mega gallery Hauser and Wirt, which is from Zurich in Switzerland. We have also famous collecting institutions here, such as example, UBS Bank, Bank van Tobel, or Credit Suisse and Julius Baer. And Switzerland is one of the top global innovation indexes for the past uh, 10 years. So my company can create a bridge between China and Switzerland. We never create barriers because that's what culture should always do. So if you're interested in, for example, partnership or using our services and technology and exhibiting in Switzerland and Europe, or if you like to talk about an investment opportunity or just benefit simply from our large network and our channel, I would be very happy to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Romana. So we will move on to our next speaker, Christian. He is a founder and CEO of Christian Space Product Design. Hello, uh, my name is Christian Spiers. I run a product design studio since 2013 in the, in the heart of, of Europe next to beautiful lakes and the Swiss Alps in a small German speaking uh, city, Zurich. From this idyllic location, my office works with international companies on a variety of industrial and, and interior design projects. 
I studied industrial design in the Swiss design school ECAL in the French speaking city of Lausanne. Nowadays, I'm a teacher at this institution and can, and can pass on my design experience to the students. Directly after my graduation, I moved to Paris to work with the designers Ronan and Ervan Burlek for almost five years. During this period, I had the pleasure of collaborating with some of the most important European furniture companies, such as Hay, Matiazzi or Swarovski. Exciting projects are created when cultures come together. Therefore, I put great effort on combining my innate Swiss design values with a French sensibility and always seek the exchange with interesting new partners. This is why I am, I am convinced that the collaboration with a Chinese company would be beneficial for both sides and that project could be created that we can only accomplish by working together. But what are these Swiss design values? The Swiss design tradition is more than nice watches, tasty chocolate and tunnels for trains that always arrive on time. Although each of these things illustrates some of our core values. Swiss design is efficient in the use of materials and therefore is both sustainable and cost effective. It is the conviction that design must be persistent and not following a trend. Quality is the main focus, allowing a pleasant experience with the product for both the manufacturer and the customer. I personally believe a good designer is a craftsman who creates the right project for your company, your history and, and visions, while adding his personal point of view. I would like to present some of my latest project to illustrate this approach. Tava is a wooden toy which was designed for the tradition-rich Swiss company Neve. Since the successful launch of the original Neve building blocks 30 years ago, they have been looking for another unique wooden toy, which however can be combined with their classic blocks while playing. Tava fulfills precisely this demand. This is the reason they were so happy to welcome Tava into the NAV product family. The NARA home furniture system was designed for the Swiss company MAB Möbel. But this was not only a design project. The goal was also to rethink the production process and therefore to be able to keep the factory in Switzerland. With NARA, we are responding to the demand of customizable furniture. Each piece is manufactured to order. The client can compose his own, his own piece of furniture based on a grid system. A lot of different contents and material can be chosen. Thanks to a clever frame surrounding the piece, the result does not look like a system furniture. Because of the reorganized production and the short distances within Switzerland, we can guarantee a prompt delivery. One year later, we were able to apply the same logic to the table Anton, where the MAB clients can now compose their own table by choosing the size, legs, tabletop shapes, and different kinds of materials and colors. In 2021, the next project will come to the market, a bed collection. The Centre Culturel Suisse in Paris is somewhat of the Swiss cultural representation in France. Together with the graphic designer Marietta Eugster, we were given the opportunity to redesign the place. Starting with the signage and the reception and the reception counter, in a second step, all mobile elements in the entrance area have been redesigned and adapted to the needs of the visitors. For the furniture company Vitra, we were able to create a touring exposition, which was installed in eight cities in Germany. The surprising aspect of this exposition was, the, was that each location 
was completely unique and therefore the exposition had to be adapted in order to create a singular atmosphere. We were guests in a sauna building, an old postal office and a church, to name just a few. While working as an assistant to Ronan der Van Bourelec in Paris, we designed the furniture that was introduced to the visitors. It is a versatile office furniture system that offers new solutions to work focused in an open space. During my time with the Bourelec brothers, many exciting projects have been created, such as lamps, office furniture, carpets, couches, chairs, and tables, including this collection for the Danish company Hay. Originally designed for the University of Copenhagen, it is now a worldwide success. We also worked on less industrial project and one of pieces, resulting, resulting in expositions, small production series of handmade pieces, as well as a pavilion that can be moved around Paris with the help of two trucks. And the only modern installation to be found in the Chateau de Versailles, the chandelier Gabriel. He awaits the visitors above the entrance stairway. The chandelier was designed without any technical restrictions, knowing that in collaboration with the Austrian manufacturer Swarovski, we will be able to develop solutions to make it happen. The big innovation is that there is no visible light source. The crystal elements shine from within. The final result is a 15 meter high crystal pearl chain that weighs over half a ton, but seems to hang from the ceiling in ease. Beside my work as a designer, I'm a university teacher. In this context, interesting collaborations with international brands are constantly, constantly arising. For example, this project. For Samsung, we, were, we worked with the master students on rethinking the future of television screens. The outcome is a set of 22 trend-setting ideas that will most likely shape Samsung's design approach in the years to come. Whenever possible, I spend my time on the move, be it in the Swiss mountains or in other countries. This allows me to broaden my horizon and then work on new project with all my energy. I would be pleased to also open up new horizons for your company through my Swiss design approach. Thank you very much for your intention. Don't hesitate to contact me anytime. Thank you, Christian. So we will move on to our third speaker, Raphael Lutz. He is the founder of Hyperactive. Raphael, please. Yes, with pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Let me share my screen. Voila. Please let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Raphael Lutz. I'm a product designer based here in Lausanne in Switzerland. And I have a product design office that is called Studio Raphael Lutz and also an innovation lab that is called hyperactive.le. What we do in our innovation laboratory is to gather creative people, researchers, and other people to uh, bring innovation to companies and uh, other partners. Our customers are Nestle, Nespresso, international companies, and uh, also startups and SMEs. We decided in April 2020, to launch a call for project. We were in lockdown in Switzerland and uh, we were wondering uh, what to do as uh, to give an answer to this crisis as uh, a creative uh, industry. And what we did was to launch uh, the project Bring Your Own Mask. The problematic was the following, we saw that as designers, we saw that uh, 
the disposable mask uh, it was going to be an ecological disaster. And also another problematic was that the mask was anxiety provoking because you weren't able to see a face. And for us in Switzerland, it's quite special because uh, we, were never, we never got the habit to wear a mask. And for us, uh, we have a lack of discipline and habit to wear them. So we invited 120 Swiss designers to redesign the protective mask. We had uh, 41 designers that answered to our call and we received 36 projects. These 36 projects of mask were really interesting and the problem was in April, we weren't able to show them physically. So we asked the designer to produce a 3D model and we did a website to make a virtual exhibition. So you can go on our website and you can see all the 36 masks. And if you click on one mask, you can see the 3D model, but also the description from the designer and to the concept and the 3D renderings of what is the ideal render of the mask. This was the only, possible, uh, the only possibility for us to exhibit this mask at this time. And now we are really, really happy and really, really proud uh, to be here in Shanghai to expose them 3D printed and physically. We decided to make three categories for the curation. The first curating category is concept. The projects falling into this section are often small steps to the side, twisting existing ideas rather than reinventing them. They are easy and cheap to produce as they deploy existing manufacturing processes and commonly used materials, adding small yet decisive improvements. They approach the question conceptually, working on a cultural or social dimension, commenting on masks as fashion accessories. For example, here on your right, you have a transparent mask. And now in Switzerland, we have developed a VibroBlock transparent tissue in the APFL. So there is a reality of producing this mask. The second curating category is design. In this design section, we find masks that explore technological innovation in the design and also in the production process. They develop new materials or repurpose existing materials for another use and often care for environmental sustainability in a clear, easy to apply way. They are often in advanced development and can swiftly achieve small addition or mass production level. The third category, the third curation category, is poetry. This last section is using the medium as the message rather than trying to put together viable models. Most of them offer no protection and are not meant to be realized. But the proposal, proposals work instead as a poetic statements or humorous commentaries about the social significance of wearing masks, our relationship to our own identity, our future in a projected tomorrow. It was really interesting to work with all these designers that offered a strong and quick answer to the crisis. And this is what the innovation is. This is what we produce in Switzerland. We produce innovation in materials, in conception, but we are also really quick and really creative. And working together with the industry, the Swiss one or international ones, can bring a project like that. All the masks were designed in two weeks. Everything was done in two weeks in April when we were on lockdown in Switzerland. This is really quick. And uh, this is only made possible by gathering together creative, creative industry 
the innovation industry and also the industry in general. What's next? For us uh, at hyperactive.le, it's really important to bring this innovation a little bit further to seek for addition and also production of the masks. We are looking for partnerships and we are also looking for other actors to make innovation with. We are going to organize other calls for projects. There is one that we are preparing for the next year about the way we embrace ourselves. And what's also next about these masks? Because we are talking about a vaccine, but these masks, and this is what is really important about the design, we can make a pivot. We can make a pivot in the direction, in the direction of protect, protecting ourselves against the global pollution. So it's not only masks that you can wear to protect yourself from a virus, but also to protect yourself from the pollution. So please contact us because we really want, we are really eager to work with you and uh, to develop the mask and the innovation and what we can do for you as a creative entity. Thank you everyone and have a good afternoon. Thank you, Rafael. So we are now uh, entering a second round of Q&A session. And uh, for the three speakers, please turn on your video and unmute yourself. And we will spotlight the three of you and also the on-site audience. So uh, shall we start from the on-site audience? If you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand so our coordinator Zilla could know that you have a question. Yeah, Susie, we have one audience who is very interested. Okay. All right, good. Uh, hello, I'd like to speak to the first women speaker. That's, uh, I think, yeah. Hello, I think your app is totally amazing. Uh, so I'd like to ask, when you design your app and uh, create the algorithm, what is your first priority concern? Because it attracts lots of art lovers, but what is your first concern about when you design it? Uh, the quality of the of the microphone is not very well. So I understood what the first uh, concern is of. My, uh, first of all, thank you for your question. Um, I didn't understand it very well. I have to say the first concern about what? Can somebody repeat it, please? What is your first concern when you design the algorithm of, of your app, of your app? Okay, okay, okay thank, Romana. thank you for this question. That's a very good question. Uh, so basically, we are looking um, at uh, the art lovers' behaviors, and uh, our um, technology understands basically according to not only the colors, materials, techniques, uh, but also according to the price range and the budget of the people have what might be relevant to them. So our algorithm, uh, which is very, very detailed, basically looks at people's behaviors and understands, learns uh, what might be more relevant to them in order to show them as soon as somebody new is exhibiting on Yazoo, um, according to the like, what they might be interested in. So we suggest uh, artworks. I hope that um, answers your question for the algorithm. 
Do we still have any like volunteers who want to ask some questions? Uh, hello. Uh, I want to ask the original designer from the Christian space. Uh, as I see, you have very creative uh, uh, furniture design. So I guess you must have a very high standard when you select your partner. So I want to, my question is, how do you select your partner production company? And uh, do you have any request? Yeah, you know, uh, China is uh, very famous for their production capacity. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I always had, how, how do I select my partners was the question, right? Yeah, how do you select your production yeah, a partner? Because you, uh, your design is very creative. Maybe it's uh, difficult for uh, your production company to achieve your, uh, or meet your demands. Yeah. Um. I think in the in the in the beginning, it's always in, in interesting to to kind of get to know um, the the people. It's not so much about it's not about so much about what which company uh, it is, but more who is who is working there from a, from a Swiss uh, from my point of view. Like I like to I like to interact with with people and to work with a, with a lot of different people. So for me, I don't really look at the, at the company and what they do, but more who, who is there and, and if it uh, can be uh, an interesting collaboration. Like I um, tried to explain, I'm really, I'm really interested in, in this exchange. So uh, this exchange can be, can be uh, even more interesting with a small company um, than with a really big one. I had my, yeah, I had also a lot of other experience with companies uh, that that at the end maybe the products didn't didn't work or didn't turn out, but it was always I mean it's always uh, just interesting to to go on the journey. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> maybe I will thank contact you. you. <laughs> do we do you have anyone who want? To 因为我们现在生活中还是很少看到一些有设计、有创意的口罩，所以是想问一下那个Hyperactive，就是我们是怎么来做一些设计师创意作品的推广这方面。谢谢。需要。Yeah, you know, this girl is asking that. You know, you are doing a lot of like fantastic masks, and she's wondering maybe would we do like some special channels to do the promotion? Is marketing side? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, well, the promotion was done uh, on the website, firstly. Then uh, we made a huge uh, communication call um, on uh, the press. We, made, uh, we had a large press coverage on all the projects. And we also uh, made a lot of uh, RAM uh, on the social medias. And we are really proud, I have to say, that, uh, by these uh, various designer, these 41 designers, we have two designers that you have heard today, the Christian Spies and also the Laure Grémion. So this is part of the promotion. It's also finding partners to show the project internationally, like here, with the help of uh, Proelvesia Swiss Next, Présence Suisse Materialize, and also to bring you this project, and not only virtually, but physically. And uh, about the promotion of each designer, we are really happy and proud uh, to have a small country that is really easy to promote the design inside the country. But we have contacts abroad to make also that contact uh, that we have that our state in Switzerland that help us to bring our projects abroad. Thank you, Raphael. Um, I'd like to just adding to your uh, comments. Uh, so um, it's also mentioned by Raphael that the exhibition is now uh, on site at the Swiss Pavilion. So for our audience, if you have a chance to visit, you can go to the Swiss Pavilion at B03 and B04. 
at the overseas elite section. So you can find all the uh, 3D printed uh, models of all these uh, masks. So we also have a comment here online from Jean-Philippe. And actually Jean-Philippe is also one of the designers who is participating in this project. So yes, thank you, Jean-Philippe. Um, we have another question from our online audience. Uh, it's Kevin. I think this question is for Romana. So thanks for your presentation. Do you sell your app as standalone infrastructure as well? So other companies can use it with their own brand. Thank you very much, GC, and thank you very much, um, Kevin Kretzer, for this question. Uh, good question. I'm uh, I'm getting it quite a lot because people are very interested in having their standalone applications. So we do talk about that uh, option as well with uh, larger organizations or or uh, mega galleries who are interested to have their own application. So yes, if you're talking about a white label solution, we can talk about that. And I would encourage you to please um, contact me by sending me an email to ro at yasu.com or um, scan the QR code, uh, which is on the flyer. Thank you very much. I hope I answered your question. Thank you, Romana. Uh, Silla, do we have any other questions from our on-site audience? Um, I have a question to ask Romana. First, thanks for your presentation. And I'd like to ask that uh, whether the app has the payment function and if the if Chinese audience like the painting, can they complete the payment and uh, receive the painting successfully? Thank you very much for your question. Um, it's a very good question. Actually, what we do um, is we are uh, uh, not uh, a buying platform per se. We are basically connecting the exhibitor and the art lover. So we have uh, one function, which is, for example, once you discover the uh, perfect piece of art for your own space, you can um, chat directly inside the app uh, in real time with the person who is in charge of this artwork. So we connect basically same thing like WeChat or even WhatsApp here in Europe, um, the exhibitor, a real person, not a bot, uh, with the person who is in, interested in the artwork. We do not handle um, the sales. Uh, once uh, they start the conversation, they talk about you know, shipping options and they talk about uh, possible involved prices for shipment. We only connect and match. We do the matchmaking for finding uh, the person uh, for the perfect art world. Okay, I think this girl totally got you. Okay. Thank so you. Uh, yeah. Yes, we have one more question from the online audience, Zhang Yong. Uh, so this is question for Mr. Rafa Lutz. Can you design masks be put together with AR glasses, helmets, micro air conditioners? It's a very well, interesting question. Yes, I agree. If you can see in the 36 models, that uh, our designers have done. There is uh, a few of them. One, you have, one uh, model, you have uh, glasses, and another, another one is a helmet. And uh, of course, we can design everything. This is part of this project, the promotion of the designers, and also that the designers can have projects like that to go further, to go further in uh, the innovation and also in the design. So yes, we can do that.
Thank you. So, Sila, do we have any questions from on-site audience? As far as I know, we didn't get any new volunteers to ask any questions. So I think maybe, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you for your coordination. You're welcome. Um, so I think we are reaching our end to our lecture today. And I'd like to thank to all our speakers and also our audience and our partners here. So if you still have questions, you can write to us. Okay. Thank you, Cici. Art, art science at SwissNextChina.org. Um, so can I ask all the speakers to turn on your video? We can wave to our audience. Okay, thank you for these six speakers attending. That's a very good afternoon. You shared a lot of like inspiring thoughts with us. Thank you very much. And uh, I am here on behalf of the 2020 YRDICIE to say you know, my thank you to all of you. Bye, see you next year. Bye, bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>